Hello and welcome to The Last Andy, a board game podcast coming to you from three exciting countries across Europe. I am joined here today by Alessio. Hello. Fen. Hello. And I'll be your host, Alexis. Uh, our topic today is our Steampunk Rally Fusion, uh, Fantastic Factories with Fen, and um, what game are you doing, Alessio? Hit the games. A lot of detective works. Oh, I thought it was a hidden game, as in, we don't know what game you were doing. <laughs> uh, but first of all, uh, the Stanley Catch-Up. Uh, what have you been up to, Alessio? Well, I was playing a bit of Steampunk Rally Fusion, I have to say. So I hope I can say something useful there, uh, but we will talk about it. Uh, that aside, really not a lot happening lately. It's mostly playing hidden games, it's uh, playing a lot of The Time You Kill Me and uh, Eon Trespass Odyssey, Eon Trespass Odyssey, Eon Trespass Odyssey. So it's the same old as I think it's business as usual here. And what about you, Alexis? Uh, well, on my end, uh, not too much. I've played a bit more uh, Steampunk Rally Fusion in the past couple of weeks. I tried to do uh, Fantastic Factories with Fen. So I'll be uh, I'll be able Ooh. to uh, to talk uh, with them uh, about it a bit, um, and uh, I continued a little bit of the that tainted grill um, last night. No, no, no. The the first one, uh, the first campaign, um, the the oh. well, the the prologue campaign. I don't remember the name of it. Um, the ah, uh, ah, the the earlier original one. age or something like that. Yeah, um, age of uh, age of heroes, age of legends. Yes, age of, age of legends. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I I like it more than the base game, but uh, because we've we've put a pretty big uh, space in between all, all f- a few se- sessions, uh, it's it's a bit uh, rough to get back into it. But uh, it's been fun. Uh, other than that, not too much recently. Uh, and what about you, Fen? Well, um, I, my partner and I have, uh, we decided to rewatch all of the Marvel Champions games, uh, games, movies, um, get it started again. We've started to watch all of the Marvel Universe movies, but with <laughs> an extra little thing that um, whenever uh, we finish watching a movie, we are obligated to play a, a game of Marvel Champions, and we're not going to stop playing that until we win on expert mode. And it has to be characters from the movie as the heroes versus a villain from the movie, or as close as possible. Uh, so we just this weekend watched um, Captain America, the first hero, um, or the first Avenger, whatever, the first Captain America film, because chronologically that's the very first one in the series. And uh, we did our warm-up games against Red Skull. We're playing Captain America and Black Widow. Um, Black Widow's been chosen not because she appears in the movie, because essentially there is no other hero in the movie. Um, uh, Technically, of course, Bucky turns up, but there isn't a Winter Soldier deck um, yet. Winter Soldier's just an ally in uh, Black Widow's deck, so that's why we chose Black Widow. and She's Black Widow operating S.H.I.E.L.D., so... She has um, Sharon Carter as a ally, because that's as close as you get to Peggy Carter and Dum Dum Duggan, um, who, if you don't know who he is, he is played by Neil McDoherty, is it? Um, and he's the dude in the bowler hat. He's a bona fide, proper Marvel hero who manages to carry on into the, like, the time that Captain America's around. Um Beyond that, uh, I have taken a little break. I'm painting, uh, as I say, I'm working very slowly through this last commission I'm ever going to do, and I've been working on painting a Dragon King. Um, But it takes a long, long time because I have to build up the skin layers through glazes to get the right translucency. Um, And uh, in between that, I've been painting some Darkest Dungeon stuff while waiting for paint to dry. I... (laughs) I'm looking yep. forward to see what they they will look like. Uh, what the um, darkest dungeon things? Yeah, yeah. You, you can already see them. I posted on my Discord. Um, oh, I've the... uh, I've not uh, I've not catched up on this. Um... Mm. Yeah, uh, and beyond that, uh, right now I'm under siege from the dog who wants to go outside, and she is not 
taking no for an answer, but she's going to have to. I let her out just before we started, uh, so she's done all her business. Just because the sun's shining, she wants to be outside. But nope, nope, you're going to have to wait. That's it. All right, then uh, I guess it's my turn to introduce uh, the, the game that I'm bringing up to, uh, today, which uh, I've recommended to Alessio because I, I believe that it would be uh, definitely his type of game. Uh, it yeah. is Steampunk Rally, uh, which is a strategy game, I guess, would be a good way to, to sell it, uh, that came out in 2015 and uh, received an update in 2021 called uh, Steampunk Rally Fusion. Uh, it comes in the form of a standalone box that can be combined with the base game for even more possibilities. I've only played with the full game combined, so I'll mainly talk to, about them in, uh, as one unit. But if you are interested, you could also always pick up uh, either of them and, and just try it for yourself. Um, so Rally Fusion is an engine bu building game uh, for two to eight players. Uh, the game time is between 45 to 90 minutes in my experience. In this game, you play as a plethora of steampunk inventors that all, all had, have decided to have a steampunk race to the finish line uh, by building a race car contraption to propel themselves alongside a track. Uh, that track has a couple of uh, branches and shortcuts, uh, so it's a little bit more than simply uh, a victory point count. Uh, because you could decide to take a, a shorter route that will do damage to your vehicle but could allow you to cl get closer to the finish line. Uh, the goal of the game is simply to pass that finish line no matter the state of your vehicle. So if it explodes as you as you fly past to it, uh, it still counts as a victory. Uh, the game very much encourages you to take uh, damage and, and risks and... Uh, and kind of burn yourself uh, up as you as you go along, and it works very well. Of course, as Dominic Toretto says, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, winning's winning. Yeah, exactly. that, that, that's Wacky Races the game, actually. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it, it's very Wacky Races uh, styled kind of, uh, kind of game. It is quite fun. So the game is played... Um, the way the game is played is sort of uh, complicated. There's a, a bunch of uh, moving parts, but once you, once you get into the, uh, the general loop of it, it gets a lot easier. So each player draws uh, one of each vehicle parts, as well as an action part to form um, a drafting hand. They pick a card, they pass it to the next player, drafting their hands for the next turn, and uh, it goes up until the, all of the cards have been exhausted. So players end up with a, a four hand card. And then they can either uh, build uh, any of the parts that they have in their hand onto the machine, or discard it to gain some Russell's dice. Uh, you can freely build anything onto your machine so long as it connects to the rest of your wheels contraption. There's no building cost or anything. At that point, you may decide. Uh, at any point, you may decide to jettison a part that already exists on your machine if you want to make some space, but it won't give you anything. Um, there's uh, three different types of uh, machine parts. The first one is uh, engines that will cost die to then turn those dice into other things or, or do some actions as you use them. The second one is connection. Uh, those are always uh, four connection points onto each, uh, each side to allow you to build bigger machines. And the third one is uh, are the um, uh, propelling cards that will give you either a propeller or, or some wheels, or maybe a maglev, or maybe some some type of weird engine. Um, so long as you 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 will need to have a bit of all of them, and because when you you draft your hand, um, only on your first draft you'll have a free pick of what you you want. So you need to to think about it because it can be very uh, detrimental for to you to not get the connection that you need. Uh, you do not uh, keep your cards in between turns. So you better make sure that you can use everything that you've drafted, otherwise it will be lost. On to the next phase. Uh, some parts will give you uh, passively uh, Russell's dice or some effects. Um, once you get some Russell's dice, either by through that or by discarding the, the parts that you picked earlier, you'll then roll and use those uh, dice on parts to consume them. 
Uh, there's three main types of resources, electricity, steam, and fire, so yellow, uh, blue, and red dice. Uh, some cards will allow you to transform a uh, die onto another or generate more dice. Um, and every part has a die slot that limit the amount of dice that you could uh, can put down onto them. Uh, and you also have the propulsion uh, cards that I uh, mentioned uh, that will make you move one space onto the racetrack, uh, getting closer to the ending. Uh, finally, you have an extra resource called cogs that you can generate through, uh, through those cards that you, you've put down or sometimes through discarding. Uh, that can be used to get uh, either to get an extra die of your choice for two cogs or interacting with the best mechanic of the game, um, dice clogging. So whenever you put down a, a dice, it will stay in place, uh, locked down onto your machine until you unclog it manually. So because it's a dice placement game, uh, well, you'll have to fill up your machine pretty quickly. And the only way to clean it will be using either one of your other parts uh, action or by spinning one cog to lower the dice pip value by one. So you'll need by to two. make... Sorry? You, uh, by two, yes, yeah, by two, by two, exactly. that is true. You raise by one or uh, lower by two. Yes. Uh, so, uh, for example, the maglev card is very useful. It has two slots for electric dice. For example, uh, for, for each five that you put down onto the maglev, it will generate one propulsion and something additional. Uh, but once you've put down two five on it, you'll need to spend uh, three cogs to lower those back to zero and clean um, clean one die from that and you can use your maglev again. So this leads to a lot of fun moments in the game where grabbing an expensive engine, filling it up with dice and then trashing that engine once it's uh, run its course instead of cleaning it uh, is a very valid strategy. If you cannot build an efficient cleaning loop, uh, just building whatever, filling them up with, with crap and then just throwing them away uh, works really well to to get uh, to get ahead into the the the, the race, uh, especially as you get closer to the end. Uh, you don't really need to clean those things. So you can just do whatever you want and uh, you know uh, destroy half of your machine just before you get to the end. Um, I think that the game is a really fun variation on. Um, uh, worker placement uh, type game. Uh, it has a little bit of uh, engine building. It has a little bit of uh, dice. It, it uses some drafting for the for the cards. With all of those different elements, the game keeps it keeps itself fresh very often. Um, it is a little bit. Um, th there's there's quite a bit uh, of random into the game. So I think that's that uh, it's a little bit at its disadvantage. It always feels like you can't really make a proper clean strategy and you'll always have to improvise at the last moment, which works well for the team of the game, but can be, uh, can be a problem for some people. I've recommended it to Alessio because I know that Alessio really likes uh, racing uh, board games, uh, as he recommended uh, quite a few with uh, Flamme Rouge and um, Hot... Heat. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Uh, how did you how did you find it, uh, Alessio? Well, I have two things to say basically. Uh, the first one is the silly one. This game is uh, fantastic. It's amazing to play uh, with a lot of people to to go absolutely crazy with your vehicle and stuff and everything, because uh, it's. Uh, it actually conveys the walk races feel. Uh, you basically go uh, patch up your engine and build it on the fly, turn after turn, while you try to recoup. Uh, at some point, your engine explodes and you end up uh, behind the last position. Uh, you have boosters to play, uh, surprise moves. Uh, we have played with a couple of modules, uh, which are the, which were the secret projects uh, and uh, <clears throat> and the events from the from the fusion expansion. So we'll probably talk about that. But the game is a, a complete mess in a positive way because uh, there 
there are a lot of moving parts the turns uh, alexis didn't say this but they are simultaneous so you are playing all at the same time in the same phase and everyone is moving taking damage destroying parts uh, uh, clogging with dice when they vent they remove stuff uh, pips from dice uh, they activate abilities uh, place cocks and so on there's the games is a lot busy and uh, busy in a positive way i have to say this is uh, uh, this catches perfectly that feeling and uh, I, I think if the if the plan was to give you a racing game with engine building where the the execution is a total mess and you have fun doing that the 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 game is they perfectly nailed it it's perfect it's doing exactly what you expect it to do now uh, the other thing is that uh, as a pure racing game uh, there is a bit to say because uh, um, uh, a racing game player could want to calculate a bit to make calculation ahead uh, you plan a lot tactically in this game meaning that uh, you can see ahead one or two moves but of course uh, you cannot really predict what your opponent is doing mostly because the turns are simultaneous and you are busy with your stuff so you you are not Take, paying attention to where your opponent is ending uh, so you probably are missing uh, uh, there are special powers for instance uh, which trigger boosters which trigger only if you are last or if you are behind someone and uh, you cannot really plan ahead for this stuff unless you plan to explode which is a perfectly legit tactic as uh, Alexis said uh, but there's a lot of randomness involved especially since the the pips in the dice work multiplicatively meaning that if an ability has two dice slot and it can be activated by a three uh, if you put there two dice for a combined value of nine you can activate it three times because uh, nine divided by three is three so uh, basically you have to roll high here so cogs are really important the drafting is uh, quite uh, uh, is quite cutthroat actually here because uh, it's important that you uh, not just pick the elements you want for your engine but you actually have to avoid that your opponent either gets uh, a piece which could help them like in normal drafting but since cards can be sold for cogs or dice uh, you actually have to prevent them from selling for something they need so uh, you have to be uh, pretty careful here and i appreciated it a lot this part of the game and uh, the problem is that you have to roll high so uh, sometimes you will be just wasting cogs over cogs because you need to increase your pips on your dice and uh, while your opponent doesn't and since this game is two to eight players you just fill a board with eight people and uh, when you are the unluckiest player there you are in for a bit of a bad time luckily the game is uh, 45 minutes one hour and this uh, uh, the simultaneous section actually helps a lot here so uh, that's a pretty good game a pretty fun game as a racing game i would still play hit on the top of that uh, ah another thing i wanted to say is that the the, the finishing of this game is actually a bit like flam rouge meaning that uh, uh, the the first player uh, uh, crossing the finish line is the one triggering the end turn everyone has a turn then the player uh, who is ahead of everyone else at the end of the finish turn that's the winner so the game is pretty balanced to towards the end and it always gives you uh, a, a, a chance to play th the big uh, move you were reserving uh, since the start of the game so pretty fun also uh, the contraptions you are getting uh, they are beautiful uh, the, your character is a real character from uh, from history 
uh, just oh. in a simple way, in a simple way. So I, I yeah, you you can play with Marie Curie, for example, but she has yeah. a robotic arm. Ma Marie I don't Curie. know if realism is that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, every character is inspired by a real life inventor. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was curious actually. Did you uh, were you able to play it with your with your kids, or is the game maybe a little bit too? Um... Yeah, the, the 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 game is a bit too a bit too complicated for the kids. Yeah. Uh, mostly because I had to get the English version, and uh, there are a lot of icons, but. Uh, explaining the names plus the stuff for people who is about just reading. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely not a game that you can play with just the icons, unfortunately. Yeah, um, po possibly uh, nine, ten years old uh, could play this, probably. Uh, expect them to lose. This definitely did not felt uh, like a, an extremely tight game. Uh, it, it felt like the uh, the creator had a lot of ideas and wanted to put all of them into into the game. But it thankfully it works pretty well because uh, well it, it fits that that wacky race kind of uh, kind of style that the game goes for, uh, which I think is pretty good. Uh, with a game like this, it's it's a little bit less. Uh, uh, annoying when there's lack of balance because everybody is just having fun, uh, having their vehicles blow, blowing up yeah. uh, everywhere as you play. Yeah, um, if it wasn't for the blowing up, the taking damage, uh, removing stuff, and building up on the fly, this game would be basically a mess. Like, uh, I want drafting. Oh, yeah, put them, put it here. Uh, okay, engine building. Okay, so what do we do as a finish, uh, as a finish condition? Let's say we put there uh, a race. Okay, uh, it's a, a lot of concept and some games, but they work together because the entire concept of the game is making a mess and just go ahead, uh, ahead of everyone else. Yeah. It's uh, it's honestly been a really fun game that I've uh, that I've just discovered, and uh, I'm looking forward to play to play a lot more of it. I think. Uh, also, a good thing to note is that the game is not that expensive. I think that it was originally on Kickstarter, uh, from what I understand. And if you want the base uh, game, it's around uh, forty to fifty uh, euros. And if you want the the full package with both of them. It's, uh, I think that it's around 70 euros, somewhere like that. Uh, I uh, think kind of that yeah. for 80 euros, you can get, uh, uh, the game is Steampunk Rally is the original. Fusion is the new one with uh, two new modules and the Fusion dice. And uh, uh, together they are the Atomic uh, box. I think that the Atomic Deluxe on the Roxley website is like 80 euros. Deluxe yeah, has exactly. metal components. Yeah, uh, you, you get like some proper metallic uh, cogs and stuff like that, which is pretty fun. But uh, all in all, like the game is not that expensive for, for what it offers. There's a lot of uh, uh, content. It's it got a wide play range too. The fact that you can play between two and eight player and that the game plays really well, both with uh, just three player and with six, the, the two, uh, <laughs> two of the configuration that I tried. Uh, I've not tried with eight, but I think that's, that's to its, uh, its advantage. Uh, you've not had the time to try it, Fen, have you? Uh, no, um, I'm pretty much uh, not really bothered about playing it. Um, the fact that it's... Kickstarter originally, I know they put moved it into a form of retail now. It's not one of the Roxley games I'm super bothered about. I will say it's nice that um, you can buy Rally Fusion and the promo pack, which contains all like the extra characters from their website. Dr. Brown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's it's... nothing Kickstarter is exclusive, which is which yeah is nice. Yeah, um, so that's like a positive for it. But um, and I've I've obviously I've got Radlands and Brass from them as well and dice throne is something that's been on my radar for quite a long time um but uh, yeah it's 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 one too many games and it's not the kind of game the people i play with would enjoy so um i'm i'm not going to bother with it but i do like i, I played the original steampunk rally which was like i don't know why they've done an update because the original game's actually like very good so um I would have liked them to have gone for a new, uh, maybe just not carry on with this steampunk rally and have done 
maybe something sci-fi, maybe something in Radlands. If if this had been in the Radlands setting, or maybe I'd be on it. But switching the the rules a little bit more, so because fusion is very much just the base game with uh, some extra mechanics, uh, more staff, more inventors. They're, they're talent touring in fusion. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a good point. They the mechanics could have definitely been uh, updated, but as it stands, I think that it's a, it's a really fun uh, combo to get. Okay, the fusion uh, the fusion die goes four to nine pips. Yeah, I'm not going to explain the fusion dice. Like that's a small mechanic. Of the yeah. game. If people are interested. They can they can play it. Yeah, they can go uh, to the rule book if they want. So um, all of this contraption uh, would never be built without proper industry behind it to support the, the, that building. So we'll now learn more about those with Fantastic Factories. Yeah, so Fantastic Factories, which is a risky thing to name your game, is a one to five player dice worker placement card engine builder, which sounds really clunky. Uh, but um, it's just the labels. We haven't got good labels for this type of game yet. Um, it's by Joseph Z. Chen and Justin Faulkner and published by Metafactory Games and more specifically, uh, is it Deepwater? It is, uh, yes, Deepwater Games. Um, so this is one of those games that you can sit down and explain all the rules within five minutes and just let people go and figure it out. Uh, the concept is uh, the game is played until one person has constructed 10 factories, that's 10 cards in their tableau, or uh, somebody has gotten 12 goods and then everyone gets one more round to go and then uh, highest point score wins. And points come from goods and from cards in your tableau. So if you play Race for the Galaxy, some of this is going to feel familiar. Um, in fact, one of the things that has to be said is this game doesn't reinvent the wheel at all. Not remotely. It's not innovating. It's just streamlining everything down. So on a round, uh, sorry, at the start of the game, you will have four dice in your color. You'll have a headquarters board, which has a bunch of slots to put those dice in. And uh, you will have four blueprints randomly dealt to you from the blueprint deck. That's the communal bl blueprint deck. Then you'll set up a market. You put four symbols in a row. They indicate the suits of the contractors uh, that land in there. Then below that, you'll deal four contractors out. And then below that, you will deal four blueprints. That's the market section. And then everyone gets one metal, two energy to begin with. And um, your start player takes their turn. So market phase is done in turn order. You can optionally flush an entire row. If there's nothing you want there, you can get rid of all four cards, have four new cards dealt out, and then make a decision. The second thing you can do is you can get a blueprint or a contractor. If you take a blueprint, you just pick it up from the relevant spot and put a new card into the place. If you take a contractor, you have to look at the column tool they're in and you have to discard a card from your hand with the matching card. Contractors are very powerful, but temporary. They will give you stuff like uh, extra metal, extra energy, uh, a temporary additional dice, so you get plus one worker, or perhaps they'll even let you construct a building. Uh, the more powerful ones also require extra resources when you pick them up. That And so then, once that's done and everyone's gathered a car one card, you go on to the work phase, which is simultaneous. It keeps the game bree uh, breezy and fast. Uh, everyone rolls their dice. So you roll your set four dice and any extra dice you've managed to accumulate through abilities or contractors. Uh, and then, in any order you like, you're going to place your workers onto cards to do things. You're going to activate cards, maximum once for each of the cards you have. And you're going to build. You can build any limit, any amount of cards. No limit, I mean. Um, you can't have a duplicate in your tableau except for certain cards that say you're allowed. And then at the end of the round, if you have more than 12 energy or metal, you have to discard down to 12 of those. And if you have more than 10 cards in hand, you have to discard down. Uh, and that's the loop round. So the real crunch part of it comes within the dice placing. As your baseline, you have your headquarters, which has three slots in research, three slots in generate, and three slots in mining. Research, very simple. If you put a dice in there, you get to draw a blueprint. Doesn't matter what value it is, any dice. Generate, you are only allowed to place one, two, or three value dice in there. You get the amount of energy pictured on the dice, number of pips. And then mining, you can put four, five, or six in there, and you get exactly one metal. 
However, the game also rewards you for playing multiples of the same dice. So, if you put two of the same dice into the same row, you will get an extra. And if you put three in there, you'll get another two extra. So, just as an example, if I put two ones into generate, I will get one and one, plus a bonus one, for a total of three energy instead of the two normally. Needless to say, this is like a nice mechanic, it's a nice extra bonus, it can help you do stuff if you've rolled kind of badly. The other place you're going to put your cards is onto the factories you've constructed. So, to construct a factory, you look in the top left corner, you check the suit, which can be uh, cogs, spanners, hammers or shovels. They're icon and colour coordinated, so very clear and easy for people who are colour blind. There's always stuff there. Below that will be the cost, which will be some value of metal and or energy. Usually at least one metal, sometimes no energy. And then you just simply put the card into your tableau and you can use it immediately. Give you an idea of, of some of the things. There are five building types. There's production cards. So for example, uh, the battery factory will let you pay four energy to generate a good. So a good is worth a point at the end of the game. Energy is worth nothing at the end of the game. So nice, nice and easy. Uh, the, then you have red buildings, the training buildings. Um, they modify your worker dice in various different ways. They tend to not be worth any victory points at the end of the game, but they have powerful abilities that can solve problems within your roles. Uh, yellows are just straight up resource generators. For example, the harvester lets you place two cards with exactly the two dice with exactly the same numbers on the card, and then you can choose to generate either four metal or seven energy. Metal's slightly harder to get and slightly more valuable in this game. Energy is a bit more plentiful, makes sense. Um, then we have the Purple buildings, which are special, they do a whole wide variety of different things. Uh, here's one I quite like, it's the Cryo Lab. Uh, you're allowed to put two dice on it, any two dice, and they don't do anything, but you get two extra white dice in the next round. So you literally take two workers and chuck them into Cryo, and then thaw them out in the next round to get set them to work. Which, kind of fun if you're short on resources and you're like, oh, I, I need to position better to get some better cards, you can tuck them away for a little while. And Can I dystopian there's... if you think about it? <laughs> Don't think about it too much. Uh, and then finally there are the monuments. They are grey cards. They don't mechanically do anything during the game, but they generate points at the end. They vary. There's like the beacon, that the more beacons you play, you're out of multiples, the more points they're worth. Or the obelisk, you're allowed to play multiples of those, and they're worth two points. Most buildings are worth one point. And the megalith, which... Uh, uh, Alexis, you played, didn't you? Where um, it becomes I cheaper, did. cheaper the more other monuments you have, and it's worth a whopping three points at the end of the game. So that's it when it comes to components. Briefly to talk about it, uh, the game has an insert. It has um, nice, good quality cards. Uh, it has a lot of tokens. The dice are satisfying and decent, but not flashy. They are gem coloured dice, uh, gem dice coloured in the different player colours and then some slightly pearlescent uh, white dice for the extra workers. All the tokens are quite clear and simple. There's one good, two goods, metal, energy. Um, and that's and the cards for the contractors and some reminder cards, just in case people lose track of what they're supposed to be doing. I'll be honest, this game is really straightforward to teach to people who've played any kind of game before. I can, I can confirm the, uh, that uh... It takes about five minutes to, to understand how the game functions and a little explanatory card that explains to you like a, your turn order and what uh, every symbol means uh, basically could do the, the job uh, by itself. If you put the, that game in front of someone that uh, played a board game before, they'll probably get uh, into it quite easily, I would yeah. say. Yep. I'd say it's a good introduction to symbol-based uh, tableau builders. So. Just like San Juan is also a good uh, introduction to Tableau Builders because it's all based in words. Um, this is a nice way to sort of lead people into if you want them to play Race for the Galaxy, you can get them confident with this. But the dice mechanic is kind of unique for Tableau Builders at least and kind of fun. My one negative with respect to the game is the insert works really well if you keep the game flat. If you put it on its side, everything's going to go everywhere which is a classic that sometimes happens. Um, and this isn't really a bot. It's, it's a, you know, like the small 
uh, carcassonne sized boxes so it's not really something you want to keep flat you tend to want to stand them up like a book so you'll have to think about what you're doing with that um, yeah so that's the main game uh, Alexis your any additional thoughts you have and then I'll briefly talk about the two expansions um well just one thing today I I could say about it is that it's really fun and fast uh, once you get into your turn order it gets it gets like really fun to to plan your your move for the next few turns um, I I really like that you can just have a strategy in mind go for it and while there's random and there's there's a, a certain element of a uh, trying to to see uh you know what you'll get and uh, how you can generate things i was i was able to plan my turns in advance and have them turn out how i want it uh, i think that's uh it's quite a fun fun game for such a tight package like when uh while talking about the steampunk rally fusion i mentioned how the fact that the game is not really tight and it's very chaotic uh this is the exact opposite this is the kind of game where you can just have everything planned in advance uh also uh, for the people that uh, that might play it at some point, I would say to uh, not neglect the fact that there's not only two economies in the in the form of um, electricity and metal, but also the blueprints that you have in hand, since you need to spend those to uh, build new buildings. Uh, it's easy to find yourself with a, an empty hand and not the the right cards that you want to to use to later build more buildings. So that's uh, an, the blueprints are another like small economy of on their own. But yeah, overall extremely fun game yeah when we played um i started off with a bunch of production buildings i got a very fast economy going and then it ground to the halt on the card front because i needed to produce goods to draw more blueprints and i realized i didn't have any production buildings that made blueprints so i kind of pivoted into making monuments to try and close the game quickly uh, so we had low scores uh, but at the end of it, I had 16 and you had 17, which is just like very good for a first game, especially given that I pivoted into a rushdown strategy, which in Race to the Galaxy, if someone starts rushing you, they are going to stomp you if they know what they're doing. Here, like it's it's smooth, but it can have those moments where your engine just kind of seizes up because you've mishandled it, which is very interesting. It, it's like like literally like cogs clicking and then failing suddenly which makes me think of corrosion i need to talk about that at some point yeah it's it's very interesting and also um it's kind of dependent on your on your dice roll but not into an uh, if you're doing your your uh, game board well not an unreasonable amount like you'll always have a couple of options if you if you've played your cards properly yeah uh, but some factories have just like tremendous cards that you you have to put them down thinking well i'm not only going to activate it once or twice this game yeah like the nuclear um, power plant only activates on a six um which is fantastic but then you need to try and get yourself other ways of manipulating the dice or extra bonus dice yeah. otherwise it might well, just sit there well getting a six is uh is doable i had one that was required me to use three dice to get a total of 14 at the very least and yeah. that's extremely costly. It is. It is three uh, dice of high values. And you're also sacrificing getting metal. So it does ask you to make some difficult choices. So before we finish, I'll briefly talk about the two expansions. The first one is called Sabotage, I want to say. I think it's Sabotage or Saboteurs. Let's get the right name. A subterfuge. There we go. I was thinking of Sabotage, which is the gnome miner game. Um, subterfuge adds in a um, conflict between the players where you can steal resources, steal um, cards, subcontractors do that, or you can um, uh, sabotage people's buildings. Uh, so it increases that level of interaction. This is the expansion I physically have, and I think it's the weaker of the two expansions. If you're the kind of person who loves interaction and you're looking at other people's engines and you're like, Drat, I wish I could just... I wish I could just smash up their key building for a little while just to slow them down. Then this is this is for you. But I mean, I don't play takeovers in Race for the Galaxy because I play these to construct an engine and watch other people construct engines and look at them go off and be like, oh, wow, that's some neat combos. Really cool. So I'm not, this, I'm not super into it. There's a special type of frustration that comes with playing a game of uh, engine building and having someone just uh throw something at your beautifully built engine and fuck up your turn that's a specific type of frustration that you need some very uh 
like-minded friends to play with otherwise it will lead to uh people being angry <laughs> yeah it can do but if, yeah. if it appeals to you then that is there's the option the other one is called Manufactions. Uh, I've only been able to play this one electronically because uh, I haven't got a physical copy of the game. It's a much bigger box than Subterfuge, uh, and it adds in a load more blueprints and contractors. But the big things, it so it increases the number of options you have within the deck, which is cool. But the big thing it adds is a new resource called Vitamins that you, when you get them, let you modify dice up or down. Uh, and corporate factions, meaning you can have a unique power at the start of the game based on the faction that you are. It's very nicely done. It's easily integrated and it's modular. It, it's just an improvement to the game for all types of players who enjoy Fantastic Factories. That's the one I would really rec recommend. That's the one I'm waiting for it to come into print somewhere. I hope I can pick up a copy before this episode comes out because I've only found one place with one copy available. Um, and I can't afford it right now. So, <laughs> from, so from the way, <laughs> good luck. The way it looks, it seems to add like a lot of depth to the game. Yeah, um, that is less present in the the base game. Not that it's it's not deep, but just um, it seems anyway, to go a little bit deeper, like VR. Uh, anyway, bit, uh, I'll take one. So that's one less. <laughs> so um, the the uh, yeah. The, the thing to consider is it's like Race of the Galaxy when they added prestige in. It, like, the extra mechanic is there if you want to interact with it, and vitamins are just nothing but an overall positive. Yeah. Uh, if I was going to say one thing that makes this game sometimes a little tough to get on the board for some people, uh, it's the artwork. Um, I'm not a fan of the artwork. Uh, it is the factories I kind of like. They look like they're made out of, like they have no lines on them. They have that kind of South Park Samurai Jack sort of aesthetic where they're constructed out of blocks of colour. Um, and I, I kind of like that. I really don't like the contractors who are yellow. Um, they're like toilet sign people with a, a yellow colour. And then they have matching clothes. It's clear what they're doing. Um, I just, like, can you imagine if this game was illustrated by someone like Kyle Ferrin and it was a bunch of weird creatures operating all of these factories? <laughs> yeah, no, that, that would be that would be really cool. They, they look a little bit like um, legally different Lego. Yes, right? that's it, Lego people. Yes, absolutely, Lego people. So uh, it's, it's functional, though. It's clear. The iconography is super crisp, and you know what every card does very quickly with a simple glance and even though like each card is a bunch of different options on it uh, all over the place a lot of info so it's a success in design function it's just not my cup of tea visually but i do love i don't know if these come from the kickstarter one or not i don't know if i picked i picked this up in retail i don't know if this is a kickstarter thing or not but um my headquarters are double layer boards so you get to slot the dice into the different pieces and that's nice i love double layer the... boards only version that I've managed to see online seems to be double layered and they look really cool. I always like a double layered board when you do doing dice uh, placement stuff. I think that's just so much better. Absolutely. Anything that stops a stray hand knocking things flying uh, is always useful. Uh, so yeah, that is Fantastic Factories. Um, if you're looking for a introductory engine builder or you like dice work placement or any of this appeals, you like combos and things like that, Seriously, think about picking up a copy of this, um, but I would I would recommend you do not purchase a copy of Manufactions until I've bought one. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, we'll leave behind those strict tight mechanics uh, to explore something a little bit more uh, about deduction and logic in uh, hidden games. Yeah, the full name of the series is Hidden Games Crime Scene. It's from a German company, but it got translated in nearly every language. I can recount an English version, a German version, uh, an Italian version, of course, a French version, and Spanish. So I think they are almost everywhere. Uh, this is a pretty uh, unconventional, conventional uh, series of investigative games. Uh, why this is unconventional uh, is because uh, you basically uh, 
don't play by rules if you think about uh, the classic escape room uh, slash investigation case you usually flip cards uh, get clues uh, and go uh, through uh, uh, let's say an open or set pattern to uh, discover clues in a way that let you crack the case once you have uh, everything lined up in this case the game presents itself in a beautiful stunning way basically every case of hidden games is a big uh, okay i i don't have the english term uh, okay a big paper bag of course you get this paper bag like it's a sealed envelope and uh, you open it and you find all the materials for the case let's talk about the first hidden game uh, this is an uh, investigative case so i won't spoil anything except what you can see in the in the advertisement in the website so uh, this is uh, basically spoiler free there are some mechanics that i will spoil but they are spoiled by the advertisement so uh, you basically are at home with your friends uh, let's say after a dinner, you get this envelope, you open it and you find all there is to know about the case. You find uh, pieces of newspapers, uh, uh, crumpled letters, uh, uh, matchboxes, uh, 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 you get tea uh, or uh, actually uh, a kind of drink, I don't know. Uh, you get a lot of stuff that was uh, get by the people of the police investigation. You are uh, a private agency here and uh, you are basically trying to crack the case uh, with that and with the help of uh, internet. You get, uh, you get everything and these are not game elements. They are kind of like real stuff. You get to... Uh, extrapolate the information you need from real stuff for instance yeah, yeah. Like, like a, a good uh, role-playing game handout yeah so exactly like newspaper you get, page and yeah yeah you get a business card with uh with a website address you go to that website address and you try to find stuff there is a lot of unrelated uh, stuff but that there, there is also something which is kind of related to what you need you can get access police archives from uh, and the recordings of uh, witnesses uh, online with a laptop or a cell phone. You can uh, check uh, for alib alibis from people and stuff like that. And uh, it's beautiful because it's completely immersive. Uh, one thing I loved, and this is a gimmick from the third case, it's at some point uh, you you uh, okay I, I won't spoil it completely but you have to make a drink with something you find to taste it and see if it matches a witness what a witness said so uh, this game is beautiful uh, they are of course uh, played once uh, there are four cases in the first case you are investigating a murder uh, in the third case too uh, in the second case you are investigating a burglary uh, the game it goes basically everywhere uh, it plays uh, very beautifully and uh, uh, I'm trying to say stuff without spoiling so I'll focus on the mechanics here uh, when you play you are basically uh, for, for starters, this is uh, not a game you can play realistically solo because uh, you are overloaded with information. Like I said, you are not following a set path. You are recollecting clues and then you are investigating. So expect that uh, uh, the first uh, 20, 30 minutes of uh, the game are people just recollecting what they know, what they got and what they need to do. After that, you, pa you, you switch to action and that's beautiful. Uh, clues and, and stuff starts falling in, in in their place and you end up uh, getting uh, to the solution of the case now uh, 
there's a website which is the main reference website of the hidden games and that's the reference place if you need hints now these are very spoilery so uh, if you want to have a look go to hidden.games that's the website address but don't go into the specifics of the hints of the cases because that will be spoiling anyway uh, the games are basically uh, self-contained uh, you can uh, buy you can buy them and trash them when you're done they are about 23 euros each uh, they are widely available in every language uh, they have a deal with amazon too so if you want you can get uh, at a local retailer that's what we recommend but you can get them from amazon too and you can uh, have the uh, motion of getting actually delivered to your home the actual parcel containing the the case you have to crack so completely realistic feeling here and uh, basically this is it uh, they uh, i have to say something about the quality of the puzzles as usual you should uh, check them in the original language to be sure that they are actually high quality because i played with the translation with friends so uh, the puzzles are logical and quite consequential they are pretty good there were a couple of issues with translation in in italian uh, of stuff that was left in german basically but that was ancillary to the resolution of the case so that's okay but some things could be lost in translation anyway on average the 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 translation quality is pretty pretty good uh, i have to say i am a long time fan of exit series and this is a bit better as a translation so that's pretty top of the game uh this is that it seems that yeah. seems quite fun. I, I've always liked um, RG uh, type games, and, and I always love hands out in my in my RPG campaigns. I think that adds a lot to the game. So having a a company that does that is is pretty cool. It reminds me a little bit of uh, what um, Curious Correspondence does, although they lean a little bit more onto the yeah. prop uh, uh, aspect a little bit less onto the mystery uh, yeah actually they they also did a spin-off of a game like curious correspondence so uh, they are like that uh, the only thing is that your main instrument here is deduction so uh, basically uh, yeah you can have complete uh, information if you want yeah. yeah they're also a lot less expensive than course correspondence yeah of uh, course <laughs> probably helps, uh, uh, especially with the shipping uh no that looks that looks very interesting uh how long do you do you say that the case took you to uh okay to figure out the 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 first case we were in three and we played for uh it was after dinner we played for about two hours a bit less but we have we had to put the kids to bed in the meantime so uh it was about one hour and a half uh, the third case which was the one with the coolest gimmick uh i i i took a bit more because uh, i wasn't thinking oh it's not possible okay i have to do that <laughs> that's uh, beautiful i i think uh, actually the 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 third case is probably the one which has no resale value because you probably won't resell it anyway uh, anyway uh i think that one hour one hour and a half possibly two hours and for three or four people i i wouldn't recommend to do it solo because you are overwhelmed by information it you risk uh, you can do that but you risk uh, uh, passing all the time just uh, making the inventory of stuff uh, instead of having fun uh, if you have two people maybe one with a cell phone one with a laptop or stuff like that you can share share findings uh, uh, work on two leads at the same time that's the the, the dialogue is probably the, what makes the game uh, come alive so I, I recommend it playing in two or three people really invite someone over dinner get uh, one of the envelopes and crack it
you you also don't need to solve the cases in order of course you can see them uh, getting refined with the mechanics and uh, uh, learning the medium uh, uh, the more the case increase in number so there are four cases i played the first three which were translated in, in italian the third case is the the most spectacular about the gimmicks the but they are the three the, all of three of them that there is no lower quality w for what concerns puzzles and uh, I have to say that there's no need to play them in order, so pick all the one uh, who picks your interest best. Uh, of course, if you play them first, second and third, uh, there's like uh, uh, you will be cited, uh, your previous successes will be cited in some uh, witnesses uh, and something like that, but they can be played in independently. Uh, I cannot vouch for the fourth case because I'm waiting for an Italian translation. There's also a, a game for kids, which is the missing sword, I think. I didn't play it. It's all in German, for what I know. And there's Ice Cold, like a spin-off case, uh, something with ice or cold places, but I didn't play that either, so I don't know. But basically, this is it. That's Eden Games. Uh, as a it's a very different way of playing the same deductive games. Uh, I personally recommend it. I had a lot of fun with four people. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. That looks like a really fun type of game. Um, I, I'm guessing that it's probably some type of a package with multiple of them together because um, one lasting only two hours seems a bit uh, underwhelming, but if you if you get like a four of them shipped at the same time, you can plan uh, plan a few evenings. Uh, the, the, you can you can just buy all of them. <laughs> I guess so. So yeah, <laughs> but there's no bundle, no. Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, in any case, very very fun looking looking game. I see that they also have a puzzle advent calendar. That seems like a yeah. fun concept. <laughs> Yeah, they um, also have escape room yeah. and stuff, but I didn't play those. I uh, what caught me my attention was actually the gimmick of the drink. So I wanted to try it, and I that, had a lot of fun. That that does sound like a, a fun uh, a fun gimmick for uh, for an evening. Yeah. Right. Well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, you can catch us over at patreoncom slash andy. Uh, and until next time, we have been The Last ND. So goodbye from Alessio. Bye. From Fen. Bye. And from myself. And remember that the second E in Standy stands for Enigma. Enigma.